Uh, hello, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Miguel Duarte, um, a software developer working for the Overt networking team. I'm here with uh, Jaime Camaño, uh, <laughs> a software engineer all working for SUSE on the networking team, and we're going to present a talk about how to connect the, uh, the interface of a virtual machine running within Kubevert directly to an interface on the host. Uh, let's move. Okay. Okay, let's go to the agenda. Uh, we'll start by introducing the Kubevert project. And afterwards, we'll describe like, what are our goals, exactly what problem we're trying to solve, and especially, we're going to highlight why we're trying to solve this, like what's the motivation behind all, all this. Um, we'll afterwards move to the implementation stage, where we'll describe the approach to tackling the problem and eventually how we solve the problem. We'll finalize by a short demo and the next steps on this collaboration. So to the, in the introduction, uh, the first question that needs to be answered is what is Kubevert? Uh, Kubevert is quite, in, in its essence, is a plugin uh, that allows you to run and manage virtual machines on Kubernetes. It works in a simple way, it schedules a pod, and that pod will uh, basically have a libvirtd instance running within it, and it'll run a single virtual machine instance within it. It gives us the advantage of a common platform for virtualization and for containers. The use cases it, it does have, like it has more, but like will focus on the uh, migration path from a, uh, virtualization workloads into a containerized solution. This means like you can have like your application composed of 5, 10, 15 virtual machines and you go step by step, little by little, moving into a microservice architecture by splitting your virtual machines into tinier pieces. Uh, this way you get the advantage of having like a, sing a single common platform where your developers and your operation teams uh, will work. Uh, you'll use this, um, this slide with the, the architecture of Kubevert to introduce the main actors. So we have the virtualization controller, which it handles uh, cluster-wide uh, virtualization. Uh, we have the vert handler. Uh, it's kind of the Kubevert's agent within the node. And finally, we have the vert launcher. The vert launcher is the process, as I've said before, that encapsulates a libvert uh, process and runs a single VM instance within it. Now, in order for us to understand what we're trying to achieve here, uh, the easiest and best way to do it is to like describe the current uh, status quo of how to connect an interface of a virtual machine on Kubevert or to the outside world. So what we do currently is, so we have an input bridge and we create a VET pair and we connect one end of the VET pair into the VM and the other one to the bridge. Then we will need another VET pair to connect from the bridge to the outside world. In the outside world, for instance, in the node, what we will have is like a CNI black box that might be different things, like a Linux bridge, an OVS bridge, different kind of things. In essence, for each virtual machine we'll have, we'll have one pod, we'll have an in-pod bridge, we'll have two VET pairs, Mm, too, too much stuff. So our, basically our objective is to remove the input bridge, make this as simple as possible, and as the name of the talk indicates, what we want to do is to connect the interface of the VM directly to the host interface. There's a, a tweak here that we want to do this without requiring any extra capability on the vert launcher pod. The vert launcher pod currently runs as a non-privileged uh, pod, and the only capability it has is the net admin, because it requires an IP address and from DHCP, and we do not want to change that. We want it for it to keep that way. Uh, well, I'm going to hand this to, to Jaime so he can guide us through the solution part. Uh, okay, so one uh, thing that is commonly used in the virtualization world to simplify 
that are working in the host are Mac PTAB interfaces. Uh, Mac PTAB interfaces are just the traditional tab interfaces that we use with uh, VM technology, but on the side of the interface, uh, instead of having this typical standard virtual interface, what you have is a Mac VLAN interface. The Mac VLAN interface allows you to set up a, a sub-interface of a physical interface and assign it its own Mac address on the same L2 segment uh, in a way that you just have a, a, another functional interface uh, on the same physical link of the physical interface you are setting up on top of. Um, the Mac VLAN interface themselves have different ways of operating. Um, can be, they can be operating in bridge mode, private mode, we're going to assume here uh, on the rest of this presentation that they're going to be operating in bridge mode. So what that means is that uh, all the sub-interfaces that are set up on top of the physical interface are going to be bridge among each other, and that's going to be done by the Mac BTAP driver. So in the pictures that we have depicted here, uh, you can see that on a scenario uh, where one VM on the same host wants to communicate with another VM on the same host, that communication would be bridge uh, in the host itself. Whereas when the VMs want to communicate to the external world, they just reach out to the external switch connected to the host. Um, uh, so what do we want to do with Mac bit and rephrases uh, on the problem that we have here? What we want to do basically is uh, we want to create the Mac bit interface in the host on top of the lower device, whatever physical interface you have available in the host, and then we want to move that interface into the pod in a way that uh, it can be uh, used by whatever virtual assistant technology you have inside the pod, in this case, in case of Qbird uh, by Libbird. Uh, so we want to do that, as Miguel said before, without requiring any extra uh, privilege escalation for that pod. Uh, so the solution, what we're gonna do here is can be divided in three different uh, things that we want to do to solve the problem. Uh, the first one is in order to be able to properly use the Mac BTAP interface inside of the pod without any privilege escalation, we're going to use the device plugin framework. So we're going to set up a, a new Mac BTAP device plugin. And this device plugin is going to allow us uh, to move uh, the interface, and not only the interface, also the tab character device inside the pod uh, with the correct uh, access permissions uh, for the pod to be able to access it without any privilege or admin capability assigned to, to the pod. Uh, then we're also going, we're going to use also a Mac Beta CNI plugin. Uh, this is going to allow us, uh, allows us to uh, configure the interface itself and to move it into the pod namespace. And then there are the changes required uh, for Q, uh, in Qubit to correctly wire that interface uh, into the domain. And just as a means of a user guide, we're going to say, we're going to see now some of the manifests that we're going to use to configure the whole thing. Uh, first, the device plugin is, is not shown here, but it's going to be deployed uh, as a demon set with privileges to be able to create the interfaces. We, we just uh, didn't show it here for Verity. This is for an example of the configuration that device plugin is going to take. Uh, Basically, it's a JSON that's uh, going to have uh, an array of, of the resources that you want to advertise to the device plugin. Uh, the name, for example, is just the name that you're going to give the resource that you want to advertise. It, here, it's the same as the master, but it could be anything more descriptive that you want. Then the master is the physical interface on which you want to set up the Mac Beta interface. The mode is the, the, the operating mode that you want to set it up. And the capacity is the amount of available interfaces of this type that you want to half on the, on the host. Uh, so just a, a different setup, or, or why would you want to have a name here instead of using the physical interface directly? Well, let's say that uh, you want to set up uh, different Mac Beta interfaces operating in different modes on top of the same physical interface. Then you could have uh, the same master, but, two, but advertise under two different resources on different modes. For example, eth0.bridge, eth0.private, Whatever. So basically, what this is going to do is going to give you uh, 50 physical interfaces, uh, uh, physical uh, Mac Beta interfaces, as resources to use uh, in the pods. 
Uh, we're also going to uh, leverage Multus for this, uh, because that's going to allow us uh, to uh, pass the information between the device plugin and the CNI. Uh, this is how uh, the network for a Mac BTAP uh, network will be configured. Uh, you just uh, specify that you're going to be using Mac BTAP CNI and uh, give it a, ne a name uh, uh, to the network and you uh, just to specify as an annotation the resource that the Mac BTAP device plugin is offering you uh, that you want to use for that network. Uh, and here is an example of the virtual machine install instance itself. Uh, basically, you're using as a backend Multus with the network name of the previous uh, network attachment definition that you defined. And on the front end side, uh, we have a new bind mechanism of type Mac BTAP uh, that is going to properly configure the, the interface. This is a flow of how everything more or less works. Uh, it's not. Uh, don't, 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 it's just an overall description between different components. Don't take it literally. I just want to explain different interactions between different components. Uh, so the first thing that is going to happen, the Bank Beta device plugin is going to be advertising the Mac Beta interfaces that you have available. So when Kubebird wants to run a VM, it's going to uh, ask the Mac Beta device plugin to allocate one of those interfaces. So that, what that's going to give back to Kubelet is the tab device. Uh, so that Kubelet can just mount it uh, in the pod and uh, give the correct access permissions through, through three groups. Then uh, Kubernetes is going to run the pod and through the CRI uh, container runtime interface is going to tell Multus to add uh, a network interface. Multus has, is going to go back to Kubelet, is going to ask Kubelet for the resource that was allocated for that pod, in this case the MacBit interface, is going to give it back. And then when Multus itself calls the Mac BTAP CNI, it's going to pass, pass as an extra parameter. It's going to be device ID. That's the interface name that of the Mac BTAP interface that was allocated by the device plugin. The Mac BTAP CNI is going just to move the interface to the namespace of the pod, and it's going to rename it uh, in a well-known name that Multus is going to give it, and any extra configuration required, Mac address, whatever. And finally, Qbird is going to uh, uh, run inside the build launcher port the uh, uh, libbird with the correct uh, domain XML to be able to plug that interface into the VM. Uh, so the last thing that we want to see is how it's going to do that with libbird. Uh, this is a recent change in libbird, the, uh, the, the capability to be able to use existing Mac BTAP interfaces. Uh, they are defined in the domain XML as uh, interfaces of type Ethernet. Uh, and uh, the Target device is going to be the Mac Beta interface itself, and the manage is going to be no. That means that uh, Libre is not going to create the Mac Beta interface. It's going to take uh, an existing one. And we're going to show a, a demo. I'm going to pass to Miguel. Um, so this, I was not expecting this, sorry. So in this demo, we're going to be seeing um, both traffic and the entire flow of this. So we can see that the Mac VTAP device plugin is already running. We're going to see the configuration it has by in the config map. As you see, it's the same on the examples. So we're creating it with the name ETH0 on top of the ETH0 interface. We now see the network attachment definition where we define where we require a resource named Ethernet0. We see that we, it needs to be, it needs to invoke the Mac VTAP CNI plugin. And now we see that we request an interface of type Mac VTAP. And also, as Jaime explained to us, the, the Multus uh, network. Uh, we're now going to be executing this uh, via kubectl. It'll create the, the pods where the VMs will be running. It'll take a few seconds and should be happening. Okay, it's already, and now we're going to see the virtual machine instances that, that we have running. It's interesting here that both of the VMs got scheduled on the node number two. 
and what we're going to be doing now, we'll look into each of the nodes and see the resources that are allocated in each of them. So first, let's uh, look at the node uh, number one that doesn't have any VM uh, within it. And as we see, we have 50, uh, of, we can, it has the ability of creating 50 devices, but it has none allocated in it because it has no VMs uh, on it. Now, if we go to node number two, what we'll see is the opposite. While it also has 50 uh, devices that can be created on this interface, when we list the allocated, we see that it has two uh, Mac VTAP devices on top of Ethernet Zero created because the two VMs are running within uh, this node. Uh, we'll now see a tiny, very simple uh, traffic test. Before that, we'll look into the, we'll log into one of the nodes and see in which uh, subnet it is uh, connected to. And what will happen, we'll see afterwards that both the VMs got an IP address via DHCP in that same uh, subnet. And we'll then try a very simple pin within them. As we can see, it's on the 192.168.66. And we're now logging into the, the virtual machines. List their IP addresses. As we see, uh, it has uh, an, in, uh, an IP address on that very same subnet. Same thing for the other virtual machine. As we can see, pinging one interface between the other is working, and we're now, we'll now try to reach the outside world by pinging Google. As you can see, it also works. So let's move back into the, um, the presentation, and let's uh, talk about the next steps of the, this collaboration we did. So all of this is currently, we developed this in December. Uh, we had to run quite a lot and basically it, most of this lives in private repos of ours. Uh, we want to upstream this into the KubeVirt community and to the KubeVirt community and not to, for instance, container networking uh, like any other CNI plugin because the combo of uh, device plugin and CNI, they kind of not make much sense on their own. Kind of, they need one each other. For instance, the device plugin, what it does is create the interface and uh, will enable Kubelet to provide uh, read and write cgroup access to the character device that ba backs up the Mac VTAP interface and the CNI will actually move the Mac VLAN side of the interface to the pod. So like one of them by itself could not be done. Like the, the Mac VTAP CNI, by, it is only handling the Mac VLAN side of things. And there's already a Mac VLAN CNI plugin. So it's, they, we need both of them and so both of them will go into Qvert. Uh, the other thing is there's uh, an open pull request uh, adding the, the bind mechanism, which basically uh, creates the domain XML, um, the required domain XML to consume the, the character device from within the virtual machine. And this concludes our, our talk. Uh, here's the list of all the stuff we did and some references and we welcome Mm, any questions you might have? Come on, at least one. <laughs> okay. Uh, as far as I know, with the Mac VTAP, there's always the problem. I mean, if they are in rich mode, that the guests can talk to each other without issues, but they can't reach the, the host the, they the run on. Mode, did you also consider that? Uh, we assume that, like, as a limitation of the Mac VTAP by itself and they won't be able to communicate to communicate with the host they run on. So if you have, if you have like N hosts, they will talk with every other host except the host they run on. So this limits some use cases. So you could not like add a VM as another, I don't know, as another node where you could add to the Kubernetes cluster. You could, but it would be like, it wouldn't be able to, like it would be, one of them would be outside of it.
Okay. Uh, you have another question? Yeah, can, can you explain about the storage? Can I use some block devices for the VMs and how can I like, migrate VMs from one host to another one? Do you support it? I have no, <laughs> no idea <laughs> about that. You might. Could you repeat the question? I just, uh, I, one of my years is going to be <laughs> Okay, I, I was asking about the storage, how it's organized this cookie here. You're trying ah, to use okay. C side interface, isn't it? Huh? And uh, there is a read write once if you're using some devices like Zephyr VD. But uh, my question is how we can organize uh, like migration in this case. Uh, we haven't made any consideration about that. About nor storage. We only look into the networking side of this. I see. But Kubevirt, is Kubevirt supporting flight migration of virtual machines? Yes. Ask him. Yes. Maybe, maybe you want to catch up later. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. What we have is a simple proof of concept. Yeah, but generally, do you have a, let's say, time when you're going to get it available, let's say, merged, let's simply say? As soon as possible, but... But, yeah, but generally, it's like, you are putting it to the community, right? But in the end, the, everything goes, let's say, if you go on the open chip and those kind of stuff. So it's going back to the RAM class, simply saying. Mm -hmm. So, but there is still not say any agreement that they're going to pull it in or those kind of in, in a way, we do have buy-in from the community. The community is interested on the feature. Uh, for instance, the repositories we mentioned, uh, they, they, they already exist. So now the plan is to make stuff, to port stuff from our private repos into the, the repos that will host this. So we have community buy-in. Now we just have to go through a regular review process and get stuff in. There is probably the possibility to get it without waiting to, for your, to take from your branch, simply saying those changes. So what we, so what we did here is consumable right now. From what exactly. So you we could. Have, so we have the device plugin repo, we have the machine line repo, we have the demo repository where you can try it out. Exactly, the first link, the demo, you can like uh, clone that, use it, it'll do every required step. Well, the, the most scary thing I would say right now is uh, putting the right branch yep. uh, for the pull request. Because you'll either have... No, 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 no. It's work in progress. Uh, it's even marked as work in progress. It's, it's a draft pull request at the moment. <laughs> okay. We're closed. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.